Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Hannah Hock, Assembled Worlds, edited by Stella Rollig, Martin Waldmeier and Nina Zimmer, and published by Scheidegger und Spies. The 20th century brought a revolution in ways of seeing. Rapid technological advances and developments in mass media, film and photography in the interwar period meant that mass media images became ever more present and powerful in everyday life, a process whose after effects can still be felt starkly today. This revolution also had profound effects on the world of art. While at the end of the 19th century, the romantic ideal of the artists who created images from their imagination and out of an inner necessity was still widespread, the revolutionary period after the end of the First World War saw the emergence of a new understanding of art as something that responds to the apparent omnipresence of media imagery. How do images determine our understanding of the world? How do they affect our thoughts and actions? How can the power of images be used to change the world? As a Dadaist, montage artist, painter, collector, and central protagonist of the Weimar era avant-garde, Hannah Hock played a key role in this development. She was one of the first artists ever to make the media and the power of images themselves the subject of her artistic creations addressing a thematic field that continues to be of the utmost relevance. Hannah Hock is known as a Dadaist, but her creative period extended well beyond the relatively brief lifespan of Dadaism and can in no way be reduced to being sought off solely in such terms. At the same time, she stuck to the methods that she had developed in the context of the incredibly productive artistic period of the 1920s her whole life, continuing to practice and perfect them until her death in the late 1970s. Both in terms of content and the motifs she used, Hawk, who lived through both world wars, created a varied and sometimes contradictory body of work that comprises paintings and drawings, alongside her well-known photomontages. While her colleagues from the Berlin Dadaist scene, such as Raoul Hausmann, John Hartfield and Hans Richter, were newly received from the 1960s onwards, Hawke's work did not receive international attention and appreciation until some time later. From the 1990s onward, Hawk came to be seen in the United States as a feminist pioneer, one who engaged with androgyny, gender roles and the idea of the modern woman. It is only in recent years, as internal tensions within Hawke's oeuvre have become more evident, that its complexity has been better appreciated by the general public. Striking differences can be discerned in particular between her more well-known photomontages and her lesser-known drawings and paintings. While Hawke primarily saw the genre of photomontage as a way of wrestling with the modern world, she seems to have used drawing and painting in more introspective ways, as a means of addressing subjective experiences. Focusing on Hawke's photomontages in the late 1990s, the American art historian Christine Mark Holm framed Hawke as the first European artist to deal with the modern mass culture. Among other sources, Macholm's thesis is centered around Hawke's intensive engagement with the media, in particular with illustrated newspapers, as well as with the popular and avant-garde forms of cinema that had developed so rapidly in the 1920s. Indeed, from 1916 to 1926, Hock worked as a designer at Ulmstein Verlag, which at the time was Germany's largest magazine publisher, giving her access to a large stock of image material. Machon was also the first to point out that Hock was an avid cinema goer and member of avant garde film leagues in Berlin and The Hague, which screened experimental films from Europe and the Soviet Union. 
The film leagues saw themselves to a certain extent as an artistic counterweight to the primarily American entertainment cinema and argued for the artistic possibilities of the new medium. She was also publicly active in promoting experimental film and thus also more broadly in pushing for artistic considerations to be taken into account in the creation of the new mass media, for instance as a co-editor and contributor to Ecran, a Czech magazine on avant-garde film published in Brno by the architect and film theorist Frantisek Kalivoda. Through the Dadaist scene, Hawk was acquainted with filmmakers such as Hans Richter, Laszlo Molinagi and Viking Egeling and followed the development of the new medium with great interest. Like many of her contemporaries, she was captivated by film's artistic, psychological and political potential. Hawk recognized how photography and film could rapidly expand human perception and how entering into an artistic dialogue with these forms of mass media provided an opportunity to overcome conventions, habitual ways of seeing and other barriers, as well as a new way of encountering and engaging with the world. Hence, when she took up her artist scissors, she did so with an eye toward a rapidly changing mediascape that seemed to relativize everything that had gone before, one in which, outside your and mine outlooks and opinions, there are millions and millions of other equally valid perspectives.